This is The Steel Report. This week on The Steel Report, you're going to learn more about a great local program called the Senior Companion Program, sponsored by Hawkeye Community College, and also the latest of our Democratic presidential candidates as we go with former Vice President Joe Biden. That interview begins our program right now. Now from KWWL, this is The Steel Report. How does this impeachment inquiry and the vote impact directly or indirectly your campaign and the way you're going to campaign the rest of this way? Well, it doesn't change it much. It just reinforces the two things. One, that, uh, that uh, President Putin doesn't want to see me as president, and uh, Donald <laughs> Trump doesn't want me to be the nominee. <laughs> so talking about the president, you have said, I'll beat him like a drum. Uh, you're building the case that you're the only person that you feel has a chance of beating Donald no, Trump. No, I'm not the only person, but he knows. Why is he spending $10 million from the gun lobby and the oil interest and others to run ads on my, uh, against me that are totally untrue? Your, your network won't even run them. Mm -hmm. Most won't run them because they know they're flat out lies. Why is he doing it? Well, he's doing it. Obviously, he doesn't want me to be the nominee. So that, that, that's the point. And if it is, he knows that I'm going to beat him. That's why he's spending so much time and so much effort to make sure I'm not the nominee. You've had a life where you've had the ups and downs of tragedies and triumphs. Uh, there's a spot running on KWWR right now that talks about health care and going back to the accident that took the life of your wife. Uh, health care to you is a personal thing, correct? It is a personal thing. Look, I've been through a lot, but people have been through a lot more than I have. I lost a wife and a daughter. I lost a son as well, a hero, and anyway. And I, I've, I've lost a lot, but I've had great help. I've had family around me. I have a lot of people help me. But every single day in this town and every town in this state, people get up having lost more than I have without any of the help I've had and put one foot in front of the other. They are really, genuinely, I'm not being solicitous, they're heroes. And they're the people, I guarantee them, if I'm your president, I will get, I will treat health insurance for you just as if it were my own family. So ACA, you're a supporter of that. Do you see any changes necessary in the Affordable Care Act? Oh right yes, now? by the way, you know, if you notice, everybody's now adopted the Biden plan. <laughs> you know, you have Buttigieg, is a good guy, and these others, I'm happy they're doing it, talking about, you know, uh, you know Med Medicare for all that want it. That's the Biden plan. When I introduced the legislation, I said there'd be a public option that anybody who had their insurance, the 1.6 million people like their insurance, they've negotiated with their employers, can keep it. They don't have to give it up, number one. Number two, you in fact can, if you can't afford insurance, you can buy into a Medicare option within my plan. And you don't have to, you can either buy in or if you don't have the money, you're automatically enrolled in if you're on Medicaid. It also significantly reduces drug prices, as well as making sure that we subsidize what plan you can get within the what is now Obamacare, so that you never have to pay more than a thousand dollars in a deductible, and so I'm really happy that at the last debate you had three people saying I'm for I'm for Medicare for all who want it. That's the Biden plan. I think he's in as we talked today in a locker room at Loras College. Yes, uh, I believe you've come out with a statement today criticizing uh, Senator Sanders. Uh, Medicare for all. And also there's been a lot of pressure on Senator Warren to explain exactly how will she play, pay for hers without a tax increase. So they can't. It's physically impossible. Mm -hmm. There's a independent study, a budget group that came out as bipartisan, pointed out that it's physically impossible to pay for either of their plans. They cost over $3.4 trillion a year. That's more than the entire federal budget. So they talk about you could eliminate, you could tax everybody over $200,000, or maybe it was two hundred fifty, every single penny of their income at 100%, and you couldn't raise but a third or a half of it. And Bernie Sanders, who's been up to this time honest about the need to raise taxes, including the middle class, is now saying, well, I don't have to have a plan. I don't have to tell you how much it's going to cost now. There's time. And Elizabeth Warren is saying she's going to come up with a plan. It is totally unrealistic. It can't be done. My plan can occur the day after I'm elected. We can get it done. You don't have to wait five to 10 years to get it done. So I'm not criticizing them personally, but it, look, there's a little truth in advertising here. Bernie, Elizabeth, how much is your plan going to cost? I'll tell you how much mine costs and what it does. Iowa farmers under a lot of duress well, right now. Can I, if I just ask you a simple farm question, do you know what it costs a producer of an Iowa farmer to produce a bushel of corn? Well, it costs a lot of money, but here's the deal. They're not getting return on that money, especially well, it's about since- about $4, no, no, about $3.89. Yeah, so. But what's happened is 
The only thing that's kept them alive up to now has been actually able to export to China and others, as well as ethanol and making sure that we had a, a you know, that, and then Trump comes along, he cuts the ethanol uh, 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 requirement that oil key yields of the big oil companies. I was in an ethanol plant today. The fact of the matter is it employs hundreds and hundreds of people at good salaries. It allows for the farmers to be able to make a living off of corn that is now very cheap. And it's going to lead to alternatives to ethanol that are more, more advantageous biofuels and possibly get to the place where we're using, uh, you know, corn stock as well as, uh, as, you know, other things that are much more, uh, uh, will, will help the rural economy in a big way. I believe you were at the Dyersville yes, ethanol so plant I'm earlier sorry, today. I didn't, yeah. And the waivers that the, the administration has let, you know, go to these larger operations, that has really cut down or will, potentially could cut down on the production. Well, it has cut down on the production of ethanol. And I understand with the exception of uh, one plant out in Siouxland, uh, um, and that was because a local investor came along, a, a U.S. investor. Um, it is, and the president then came along and promised, well, no, I'm going to up this again. And he hadn't kept that commitment either. Look, the problem with the president is he has trouble telling the truth of what he's going to do. And Iowa farmers, as well as farmers around the country, are getting killed. We shouldn't be having agricultural tariffs in with regard to China. They're stealing our intellectual property. That's the problem. It's not the fact that there's a market for American grain, American corn, and American products. It's they're stealing intellectual property. He's picking the whole wrong fight with China. Let me ask you, um, you're not a big fan of polls, I know, but the one yeah. came out today about New Hampshire, and you dropped nine points there. So what are you doing now to increase those numbers, not only in states like New Hampshire, the early states, but here in Iowa, where you actually trail uh, Senator Warren a couple of points in the latest Iowa poll from the register? Yeah. Well, look, if all the national polls you show, I'm still winning by 13, You're 14 winning percent. winning most of them, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and look, I feel good about where we are right now. I plan on winning Iowa and winning New Hampshire. There's a great advantage. Look, Bernie Sanders won, won uh, New Hampshire with 60 percent of the vote. Uh, Elizabeth Warren has spent millions of dollars, which is, I'm not cr criticizing, on her Senate campaigns. That all goes into New Hampshire. They're neighboring states. I'm going to, I believe, I predict you, I'm going to win New Hampshire. And uh, so, look, th this is just, this is like a marathon. It's just getting going. It depends on which poll you look at. And uh, so I, I'm not so focused on the polls. I'm focused on outcomes. And I'm feeling very good the way people are responding. If you take a look at all the polls I've seen, in every single sector from young people to older people, from African Americans, people of color, I, 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 I'm the only one that has support across all of them. And so that's the basis upon which I think I'm going to be able to win. You went to church recently. You're a Catholic. You're a practicing Catholic. I've heard you say that many times. Yeah. What did it feel like, though, to be denied a chance to get Holy Communion? Well, what did that mean to you? Well, I, I'm not going to tell you. That's, that's personal. And uh, I, I assume that uh, that priest who went to the press uh, about that is... Uh, anyway, but, um, you know, uh, I received... Uh, communion from the Holy Father and from everyone else. I mean, I just think it's, a, it's an aberration. Um, but uh, I went up today, for example, up to uh, visit the nuns. Every time I come this way, I go up. And, uh, and, I, and it, was, it was great. It was reassuring. It they was feeling good. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> we didn't have time. I usually bring ice cream. But I wasn't able to do it this time because I had to come down here. Jared Kushner has said this week that he has spent the last three years uh, repairing the damage that you have done. So uh, I'd like to hear your reaction to that. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. The idea that the Trump policy in the Middle East comes anywhere close to Barack Obama and my policy in the Middle East is absolutely laughable. Look what's happened. You've covered this area of the world in the past. The Iranians are stronger. They now have a path across Syria, and you have Israel in more jeopardy. You've turned over a significant portion of the control of that country to, to uh, Assad and the Russians. You're in a position where you abandoned 10, 11,000 Kurds mm -hmm. died, died getting, uh, eliminating the caliphate with just a couple hundred special forces we had. And this president's policy is absolutely bizarre. When you have, when, when you have 
generals and former chiefs of staff and heads of the, of the, of the Navy SEALs coming out who are not the least political people I know, coming out and saying, this guy's a disaster. The idea that Jared Kushner with zero foreign policy experience, zero foreign policy experience, comes along and he's a negotiator, no wonder we're in trouble. Thanks to former Vice President Joe Biden for taking the time for that interview. Coming up next, the Senior Companion Program right here in the Cedar Valley. That's next.